Last question in chapter 7, or last section in chapter 7, just a short one here, um, about assessing whether a random sample came from a probability that was normally distributed. So did this sample come from um, a population that was normally distributed? And so here's why we want to talk about it. We know, we've talked about this, that if the sample size is at least 30, the sample mean will be approximately normally distributed. Um, so that's great. Interestingly here, this is a fact I'm just telling you that you don't know, but I'm just telling you if the variable is itself normally distributed, so if x is normally distributed, the sample mean will also be normally distributed even if it's a sample size of 6. So here we have sample means we know are normally distributed um, under these two conditions. The question is, what if I have a sample size less than 30? What if I have a sample size of 10? And I want to do some analysis, but that analysis needs the sample mean to be normally distributed. So I don't have the first condition. If I have at least 30, the sample means are going to be bell-shaped. But if I don't have at least 30, then I don't know. The only way the sample mean will be normally distributed is if the variable is. So what we need to do is we need to somehow determine if a sample came from a normally distributed population. So here's what I have. I have some variable or some data here. This was actually from another class. Um, we did uh, resting heart rates and then we kind of did a run around. We walked around and then um, took our heart rates again and these were some active heart rates. So I don't know if heart rates are normally distributed. Uh, I kind of suspect they are but I don't know. I'm not sure. So the question is could these come from a normally distributed population? And what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, what would the z-scores look like if they were normally distributed? Kind of work through that assumption. So we have the z-score formula. We know z is x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Uh, if we solve that for x, you can do a little algebra here. You can think of multiplying by sigma uh, and then adding the mean. So you get that x is equal to the mean plus the number of standard deviations, which makes sense. Right? The value is the mean, start at the middle, and then add or subtract, if z is negative, the number of standard deviations. So z is the number of standard deviations. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what the 10 z scores would be if the data were distributed evenly on that bell-shaped curve. And we'll calculate what the 10 corresponding expected x values were, would be, if the data were normally distributed. So here we have normal bell-shaped curve and we're going to split it up into we're going to split that 100 percent evenly up into 10 equal spots. Now because we have 10 we're going to do we're going to split up here the first and last. So um, let's see we have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I don't know if that makes sense. We can't, um, let's see here, one, two, one, two, is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so we need that, we need to split up that. There's one in the middle and then four and a half basically on each side to make sure that it's even. So, um, what we're going to do is look at the value that has 35% below it and 65% above it. That would be like the, here's the reason why I'm doing this, sorry. Um, I can't have a value at the end, right? There, aren't, there is no end to this. So in order to have 10 values, I should number these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. In order to have 10 values, they have to split it up into 11 intervals. So if there are 10 values, they have to split it up into 11 intervals. So that's why there isn't a line down the middle. That's the first interval, and then we split it up after that. So let's say, just for example, there are 10 of these here, but let's say we're looking at the one that has 35% below it and 65% above it. Uh, if we went to uh, StackCrunch and did what would be mean of 0, standard deviation of 1, and I want the value that has area less than or equal to that of 0.35. It gives me about negative 0.39. So 
this value here is about negative 0.39. So if we use that previous result, the expected value would be the mean plus the standard deviation times z. So um, from StatCrunch, I actually have that data in StatCrunch. And so what I did is I just did stat summary stats columns and did the mean and standard deviation. Oops, I have my heart rate selected. And then you can see the 88.7 and 14.0. So that's where that mean and standard deviation came from. And here's the Z. And so we would expect 18.7 in the middle, and this is you know a little bit below that. And so we get about 83.2 if if the variables were normally distributed, the one, two, third, fourth one should be 83.2. Should be. Now the actual fourth value from the previous slide was 82. So we have this ordered pair, say observed and expected is 82 um, comma 83.2. So the observed was 82. If it were perfectly normally distributed, we would have expected 83.2. Here's what's interesting. Now you got to kind of step back here and really focus. So we would do 10 of these pairs for all 10 points. We'd get what did we actually observe, and if they were perfectly normally distributed, what would we observe? Since this equation up here is linear, so x and z are the variables. You can kind of see an mx plus b type thing from a line. We would expect these 10 points to be aligned. So <laughs> here's the graph. It's called a normal probability plot. And here are those 10. Here are the, the observed ones. And here are the expected ones. And you can see pretty linear. Now, they're not perfectly on a line, and that's actually like a lot of other stuff we do in stats, we're kind of fuzzy here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay. There's some flexibility there. A lot of programs will give you a little band, and they'll say as long as you're in that band, uh, it's okay. All right. That was a lot of abstract stuff. Hopefully you're able to kind of follow along. But I have some good news for you. <laughs> you probably know what's coming. StatCrunch is going to do this for us. We're not going to do any of these calculations by hand. StatCrunch doesn't have exactly this plot. They have a QQ plot. It's like a quartiles plot or quant... What do they call it? It's not quartiles plot either. Quantiles plot, something like that, normal quantiles. So if you go under graph, uh, QQ plot is right here. Click on QQ plot, select that heart rate, just click compute. And then you can get this graph here. And what you're looking for here is you're looking for linearity. So again, it's not great. You want it to be tighter in the middle than on the outside. So this one here, which is really off the line, yeah, it's not a big deal. These two here, kind of problematic. But this is, this is not bad. The ones that are bad are really obviously not linear. So this one, it's not great. But it, it, could, it could be. Um, there are ways to actually numerically quantify this, but I don't remember learning them until I took a graduate course. So don't stress about that. This is another one of these we're going to kind of wave our hands at it and say, yeah, it looks pretty linear, or no, it's definitely not linear, or eh, it could be. It could be. All right, I'm kind of out of breath. A lot of talking today. Um, I think that's it. That is the end of the presentation. So we will stop uh, the video there.